My name is uh, Mary Abukutsa Onyango. I am a lecturer, a professor of the university uh, in, uh, in Kenya. The university is called Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. It's one of the public universities and uh, I'm in the Department of Horticulture. In that department, apart from teaching students, postgraduate and undergraduate students, I also do a lot of research, especially in an area that has been neglected. I've been doing this, this research since 1991. This area is on African indigenous vegetables. I know the question many people ask is, why African indigenous vegetables? Way back when I was a young child, we used to eat these vegetables in our communities and uh, people used to harvest them and from the wild and eat them. And at that time, people were very healthy. But as I grew older, the vegetables started disappearing. So as an agriculturalist, I say, why are these vegetables disappearing? And they are not covered and they are not actually uh, considered during production and the promotion of agricultural crops. So I decided to start a program in 1991 to promote the production, utilization of these vegetables so that they can solve the African problem. And what's the African problem? Poverty, malnutrition, and food insecurity. My work has shown that African indigenous vegetables have a part to play in malnutrition solution in Kenya and in Africa and also in economic uh, development of Kenya and other African countries. I had a multidisciplinary team and at the back of my mind because of my, my interviews with the farmers I had specific problems I wanted to solve like seed lack of quality seed, lack of technical packages. So as I was thinking about my research, I wanted to have it given back to the farmers, to the scientific communities and to the policy makers. So I had different people I, I, I intended to, to disseminate this information. So I'll speak about these categories quickly and briefly about it. First, the farmers. The farmers, I had to write leaflets simplified information that the farmer can get and read and be able to produce the vegetables i also have what we call seminars and uh, and uh, stakeholders meetings where farmers are also involved where we were sensitizing them and showing them the different vegetables we had demonstration plots at the university and on the farmers field this was part of the demonstrations and then we also have what we call university exhibitions or national uh, exhibitions for people who are doing agriculture and other products i had us this for the common common people to know that there is this indigenous vegetables however i didn't stop there i also want to share my information to the scientific community that's where the, my problem came because when I first tried to publish my work in the international journals, well known, they didn't recognize my work, not because it was not good, but because they regarded this, these plants or what I was working on as weeds. So they were, to them, it was not like a crop that could be internationally accepted. So I ended up actually decided to do my publications locally in the African journals. So I said publishing in the public university journals because universities in Kenya have journals that's where I publish most of my work and of course doing that it is not having a global exposure Two, we have some African journals like African crop science society journal which is based in Uganda I publish some of my work there we have other journals like uh, science discovery and innovation is an African journal which is run by African Academy of Sciences. So you end up, the work I've done since 1991 up to now, most of it you find it locally in African run journals, which are not recognized internationally. It is not, it's only recently that uh, we got involved into some journals, few journals, but one journal, let me say, that was bold enough 
It's an African-based journal, but it went open on the internet. What we now we are talking about, open access journal. This is the Edge Fund, African Journal of Food, Agriculture and Development. When this came, it was like God sent. So I actually put of my work, most of my work there, I published a lot of my work. That's when my work just started becoming internationally recognized. I started getting a lot of feedback from all over the world. Like I said, from the UK, from the US. Because I was able now to put what I've been putting the local journals to this journal, which was just struggling to be internationally recognized or exposed. As, as you know, this journal was uh, edited by Professor Ruth Inyago. Uh, it's also on Byline International, and in fact it is really consistent with our mission of making sure that research like yours from Africa are disseminated not only to other parts of the world, but also within Africa. Uh, so how important do you think that kind of circulation of knowledge is in terms of future advancement of research and also policies? Open access journals are inevitable. They are very, very important at this point in time. Why am I saying that? Because everybody is to benefit. Because when you are doing research, it does not make sense if you keep it under the table or in the closet. We need to share the information, the research we do, however little it is, so long as it can have an impact on development, on people's livelihoods and people's way of thinking. So open access journals, I believe, will help us do that. It will help us reach all the stakeholders, ranging from the researchers, the policy makers, the consumers, the students, and even farmers in the case of agricultural information and people on the ground, because we have enlightened farmers who go to the internet and read and they will see this. The only suggestion I want to make that as we write scientific journals we must have a translation phase so that we have different information package for different clientele. If we are targeting the scientific community we write scientific uh, papers. If we are targeting policy makers we do policy briefs. If we were targeting the farmers, we do bronchures that are simplified and pictorial, easy to understand. And I think if we go that way, we shall be able to disseminate a lot of our information. And I must add that in Kenya and in most of African universities, like in my university, we have a lot of theses. Although research is not optimal, but the little we have done is lying in as great literature in our universities. If this could be exposed, translated, and put on the open access journal, will go a long way in achieving some of the Millennium Development Goals that re relates to poverty alleviation, that relates to food and nutrition and hunger in Africa and other developing countries.